More than a month ago, a list of new features and some images of Cubase 13 leaked. However, when you search for Cubase 13 on YouTube, almost no one is talking about it. And if no channels are discussing it, we'll talk about it here. The list with new features surfaced in mid-September on the page nakes.com.cy, which is a music store on Cyprus and a reseller of Steinberg products. The product page was available for a few hours and then was quickly removed. But as is usual on the internet, the rumor spread quickly and if you do a quick Google search for Cubase 13, you'll quickly find the list on different forums. But don't you think it's a little bit strange that none of the big channels that talk about Cubase like Domsi Galas or Chris Selim reported anything. Well, there are several important things going on here. Firstly, this leak appeared on September 12th, which was a Tuesday. And if you are a Cubase user, you probably know that Steinberg typically releases new versions on Wednesdays, which in this case would have been September 13th, which again would have been the perfect date to release Cubase 13. But what happened? Well, it probably has something to do with Steinberg's recent announcement that their online store is currently unavailable. If you visit Steinberg's website now, you'll notice that you can't buy anything. It appears that the company handling their online store went bankrupt and Steinberg is seeking a new company to manage it. But can you imagine if this had happened right after a new Cubase release? That would have been catastrophic for Steinberg and they would have probably lost a lot of money. On the other hand, Steinberg has been outsourcing videos that showcase their features for a while. So these bigger channels I mentioned before likely already have their videos prepared and ready to publish. And because they are probably working closely with Steinberg, they can't release leaked videos before the official software is out. But that is not the case on my channel, so we can discuss it here. So let's dive into it. The first new feature we see on the list, and I'll leave a link in the description below in case you want to check it out, is the introduction of a new channel tab within the project window. This tab will allow us to access the selected channel without needing to go to the mixer view. I saw an unlisted video here on YouTube, which was taken down shortly after I watched it, where this window was on the right side of the inspector view. So here's a screenshot comparing Cubase 12's and 13's inspector. It doesn't seem to be that different apart from some design changes, but the channel view would be here, like so. What I imagine is that we won't need to rely that much on the old channel settings window, and we are going to be able to access those features right from the project view, which I think is super cool. Another part of Cubase that is uh, receiving changes in the UI is the mixer view. Here we can see another screenshot showing what it will look like. And there are some noticeable changes like in the buttons and faders. However, it looks very similar. And to be honest, I think it's always a good thing that changes are subtle, especially for those of us who work with the program every day and are used to where things are. You know, it wouldn't be a good idea to suddenly change everything and force users to adapt again. I feel pretty comfortable working with Cubase 12 Mixer and to me is one of the best mixers out there. So we don't need too much changes here. Okay, let's see what else is on the list. Aha, uh -huh, the range tool. It's one of the most powerful tools in Cubase and now available in the key editor as well as the drum editor, okay? Uh, this seems like an interesting feature that will save us some time, especially when working with MIDI nodes of different pitches. Currently, you have to click and drag to select multiple MIDI nodes, and it can be a little bit tedious when dealing with nodes that go outside of the visible range, because you have to wait for the window to move. 
So this new function should make things faster and more efficient. I like that. All right, continuing with the list. Editor, there's a new editor experience. Mm -hmm. You can edit multiple parts from within the key editor and drum editor, switch between tracks with a visibility tab, and maintain an overview with the new track display. Okay, so we'll have to wait for the official Cubase release to test this out, but it appears to be a useful addition, especially when it comes to editing multiple parts within the same window. If we look at the screenshot here, it gives us an idea of how this could work. Up here, you can select the part which is highlighted with a white border, and down below you see the nodes of that part along with the nodes from the other parts that are activated on the left side in the visibility tab. One particular thing of this screenshot that caught my attention is that we don't have the toolbar in the editor window here. I wonder if we'll have a unified toolbar at the top instead of these two separate ones like in Cubase 12. It's something I've always found a bit inefficient since they introduced the edit window within the project window, so this change could save a lot of screen space, giving us more room to view the arrangement and fewer toolbars. I'm already pretty excited about this update, and what do you think of the new features in Cubase 13 so far? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Now, back to the list, there is a vocal production feature called Vocal Chain Plugin. It might be handy for newcomers to Cubase, but for those of us with years of experience, it might not be the most exciting feature. Considering the variety of plugins available from other developers, we already have. So what else is there? Uh -huh, new chord pads. I've always been a fan of chord pads, especially as a source of inspiration and for producers and musicians that are not keyboard players like I am. I can't wait to try out the new chord pads, especially the new presets that could provide interesting chord progressions. And speaking about chords, there is also an orchestral library, which might be appealing to some users though it's not my favorite personal feature. I'm all about improvements in workflow and tools that helps us produce and mix faster. But anyway, I guess an orchestral library is also cool to have bundled in. We'll just have to see how it sounds. And there are new functions for the sample track as well. You know, I don't use Cubase Sampler that much, but it's handy for quick sounds changes towards the end of a production. Do you guys use the Sampler track a lot? Let me know how are you using it and for what. Okay, so what else? What else? A vocoder, a new compressor, and two new equalizers, which are actually Poltex. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll have to try them out to see if they offer something unique compared to what we already have in our plugin collection. And maybe that would be a good idea for a video, you know, to test these new Poltex against the Universal Audio ones. What do you think? Hit the like button if this is something you would like to see on this channel. Next on the list are sample packs, which honestly don't excite me too much, because, you know, expanding the sound library is of course always cool, but I already have a ton of other libraries and sounds I prefer to use over the ones included with Cubase. I guess Steinberg wants to update every part of the software and offer something for everyone, which is cool, I get it, but instead of adding more plugins, we could see, for example, a refresh to the old external hardware window, which is honestly a bit messy right now. Anyway, moving on, there are several other functions listed, but I'll focus on what I find most interesting. Now let's see, step and MIDI input, key editor, MIDI CCs, can now be recorded in simplified RAMs to make it quicker and easier for editing the controller events afterwards. 
that's going to be very welcome for me because the way MIDI CC's function in the key editor was in dire need of an update. Do you want to start from the cycle marker, the last position or your selection? Configure where playback starts to precisely match your workflow. Hmm. Okay, that sounds cool, why not? What else, what else? Channel configuration to switch between mono and stereo with a single click. Oh, this one is huge. It's a long requested feature for Cubase and should have been included years ago. But better late than never, right? What else? Let's see. Vertical zoom. Zoom in and out vertically with the mouse wheel and decide whether you want to zoom to transport or selection. So this is also something many of us have been waiting for a long time. And I think Cubase was the only DAW that couldn't do that. So thank you Steinberg, finally. What else we got here? Key commands. The new key commands dialog makes managing your shortcuts quick and easy. Find commands easier with the dynamic filter and try new macros on the fly. Hmm. Also very welcome, as the old window hadn't seen a significant update in a very long time. Now let's keep looking. There are new options for importing tracks from projects, MIDI plugins and MIDI 2.0 support. I think MIDI 2.0 might deserve an exclusive video to delve into the new features. So very excited about this one because MIDI is a technology that hasn't been uh, updated for a long time. You can now set instrument tracks, rack sampler, return channels and as inputs for audio tracks as well as effects and group channels. Nice Steinberg, thank you very much. Finally, before this, we had to create a group or effect channel to be able to record tracks in audio. All right, so what else? Demo projects, window management for Windows users, which I guess it's cool for all Windows users out there. And finally, video engine improvements for all you guys working with video inside Cubase. So these are quite a lot of uh, updates for Cubase 13 and well, let's hope we don't have to wait too long to get our hands on them. See you next time.